Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Brookfield uh, Selectman's meeting of Tuesday, July 24th, 2018. Would you like to join me in saluting the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Agenda is to approve some payroll and expense warrants. Oh, just thought. Okay. Beth Coughlin is on by phone. Okay. Yep, keep going. Hi, Beth. Hi. Okay, we like. I'd like to approve. Have a motion to approve some payroll, wire expenses, and expense warrants. Go for it. Okay, payroll warrant from six twenty-eight eighteen for four thousand three hundred and one dollars and eighty-eight cents. A wire warrant for six thirty eighteen for ten dollars and ninety four cents. Expense warrant for six thirty eighteen for one hundred ninety one thousand three hundred twenty eight dollars and four cents. Payroll warrant from six thirty eighteen for sixty three thousand sixty dollars and seventy one cents. A payroll warrant from seven three eighteen for one hundred nineteen thousand one hundred sixty one dollars and forty one cents. A wire warrant from 7-12-18 for $7,095.72. An expense warrant for 7-12-18 for $128,793.94. A payroll warrant for 7-12-18 for $64,567.73. And that's when it's a table sheet, 7 Oh, seven twenty. And, okay, all right. And the last one is seven twenty four eighteen for eighty one thousand thirty eight dollars and sixty five cents. You have a motion to that effect. Okay, I will second that. Yep. Okay, that's You're quick, Beth. Uh, any discussion on these? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I like a. I would like to entertain a motion to approve the selectmen's meeting minutes of seven ten eighteen. You have that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then I, then I would like to uh, motion to approve the minutes and reports from other departments. It's EMS for June uh, 2018 and Fire Department June 28. Do you have a motion to that effect? Second. Okay, and before we um, agree, um, I'd like to congratulate John Glennon, who is on our emergency squad for his service to the community for 10 years. Excellent. So that's an, I, I feel that that's excellent. So I'd like to congratulate him for all those years of service. Yes. Yes. And so all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, announcements. Brookfield Concert on the Common will be held Friday evenings in July along with a farmer's market on the Common. Friday, July 27th, we will have the New England Swing Orchestra, Bacon Contest is Cupcakes, Judges needed for baking contests in the event of rain, concert will be canceled. For info, contact Bill Simpson at 508-867-933 or Gene Lytle at 508-867-6705. Any other announcements tonight? Not tonight. All right. Okay, first on our agenda to go over is the library lease. So who would we like to have to come up and sit? Come on down. The trustees. And I know Sarah and Rudy were involved with it. We put a couple of chairs up so everybody can be on the How would you like to do that? Uh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Please come to the chair. Okay. Oh. You can sit with me, Robert. Yeah, I, I She's got the best cushy chair here. There's another chair here. All right. Come sit here. No, you sit here. Oh, okay. Here. Is this yours? Oh, he has it. Okay. I, I, okay. Yeah. Start off, okay. Because I have reviewed, I reviewed the other one we had, and then we have some revisions. So, would you like to start off, or you would like us? 
Um, well, we've all been working hard on this for since right after the town meeting. Yes. It's gone back and forth to town council and with um, Rudy and Sarah's uh, lawyer. Yeah. So we've been quite, I'm not quite sure what you want. Do you want just the revisions read or do you want? No, I don't. No. It, it just more highlights. More, that, more different highlights of it because I mean, I had gone, I had gone through them. Yeah. Right, and well, we had that conversation. Yeah, we had well, conversation. Well, why don't I just start off with a motion to approve sure. release. Okay. I'm um, needing a second. Okay, I'll second it. All right, and with that, we have some have discussion some discussions. to the highlights. Okay. The highlights. All right, the first um, highlight that we have in here is on uh, number seven, tenant's maintenance obligation, and excluded from, I mean, it has removing snow and ice, and we didn't see why it shouldn't include mowing, because it seemed like why one season maintenance and not another. So that seemed like common sense to us. Yeah. So you mean you will take care of the snow and ice removal and the mowing? The library? No, the, we have the town mow our lawn and oh, okay. the town, the, the highway department, oh, takes okay. care of our property oh, that's good. for mowing and snow and ice removals. So, so they will do by the extension, same. you know, oh, okay. we, we feel we should ask them yes, fine. to respectfully do that. Mm -hmm. yep. And we'll back you up on, you know, if they, if they have any problem with it, you know, we'll back you up on that. Okay, yeah. thank you. Okay, no problem. Okay, and then another one was on 10. Yep, assignment and sublease, which considering the problems that might arise, um, I, I think we're going to forego this and not do this this year okay. um, because we just had the lead paint inspection mm -hmm. today, which is going to be a 34 to 45 page report. Um, but we also looked at the second floor of the town hall today too, so um, which is clean, <laughs> no lead paint up there. Oh, yeah, because we just is, had it. That's it was, good. I'd say maybe 10 years ago, maybe, we had the prisoners had come up from the, from the, uh, the jail. And they did and it they twice. And they had repainted the whole thing. Hmm? They did it twice while I they was here. They did it twice, and they, they, they did it again after okay. you were gone. And that, so they wouldn't be using lead paint. Yeah, so they wouldn't be losing, using the lead paint anyway. Um, but we had this conversation with Judy and Sarah, and we agreed yeah. to these edits because they make the most sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then what do we get on here some more? And then 19. 19, the option to purchase. Um, we had gone back and forth with taking the number out. Yeah. And it was decided by the Heller's um, lawyer that there should be a number in. They do give us credit with the number for $239,000 to purchase for next year. They gave us $6,000 credit from the lease amount that we're paying them this year. Is that right? Yeah. And then our next one, here we go on here. Okay, so the next one here is on page eight of eight. Right. Option and the term. So that just spells out the purchase price because in one revision we had taken the numbers out, mm -hmm. which is why it's highlighted in this one. Okay. All right. And we left the dates blank because we weren't quite sure when it was going to be signed. Um, we need, so the trustees are going to post a special meeting this week mm -hmm. so that we will have quorum. Yeah. So that we can all sign. Okay. They can all sign, not me. Um, okay. And then the purchase price here was two hundred thirty-nine thousand. Yes. Yeah. In dollars of exercise, July twenty eighteen. Now, okay. And then we have seven. It says any assessments by the town due after the date of closing shall be abated or otherwise forgiven. Correct. Yeah. Uh, we don't have any assessments at this point. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of uh, not really necessary, but the lawyer said just to have it in there for just in case in the next year something comes up. I mean, the only thing that he could think of that the town would do would be some kind of sewer 
project, which yeah. isn't even an right. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> we've brought that up so many times. Yeah, it's not, it isn't the, the same as the taxes. Yeah. The taxes we would pay yeah. according to this through the time yeah. that we own it. Right. And then we're in the library. Will be responsible for the, for the water bill and any other thing that goes on. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I guess Clarence, do you have anything more no. to say about it? No. I no. toured the house with Brenda last week, and um, I couldn't believe the room in it. And Brenda told me it was two houses put together. That's right. I, I never realized yeah, it was yeah. because. I was friends, the people that owned it here, such a name was the Learned, remember them, mm -hmm. I was friends with their daughter, so I haven't been up there since I was probably in elementary school. Really? And it's amazing the room that is in that house. And so it's got so much potential that the library can do with it, and like with the historical commission and all different things. Right. And like I told Brenda, I said, I support anything that they want, want to do, because Brenda's done a wonderful job here for the youth of the community, and I'm sure she'll be able to, you know, do it, be able to use it for that, too. Even, sure. even the older youth. And the older youth. <laughs> but no, but she, she's just done such a wonderful job. I mean, she's brought the kids in, and I mean, she's had different programs for them, and I think that, you know, eventually it can all be moved over there out of the library. So, Brenda's a keeper, so you should keep her for as long as you can keep her. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I appreciate that. She's Thank you. <laughs> yes. So do you have anything to vote? No. Time to vote. Time to vote. Okay. I'd like a motion to vote to sign the yep. lease. Yeah, that motion. Beth? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yep. Aye. Okay. Now, where was our newest one to sign? Because I have the revision. Um, I think the three is the newest one right here. We'll just have a meeting okay. to accept it. Okay. Yeah. This is the newest one. Okay. Now, when are the trustees going to sign? We're going to post a special meeting because we do not have quorum tonight. Okay. We only we need four for quorum. So we'll have a Friday um, afternoon meeting or a Monday night meeting because okay. we want it done by the end of July. Because I think everybody should probably, it has to be a, a notary. Yes. So I, I'm a notary too, but Karen is. Karen is. I think it would be better so, if Karen probably instead of you, with Karen yeah. notarized all the signatures tonight. Okay. Right, and I'd like Barbara's and Carol's to be on it so Karen okay. can notarize them. Okay, so I will sign it this evening, and Clarence can. That's okay. I just if you sign tonight, you're right. If you sign tonight, you're right. Okay. Do you have, it? Karen's got her notary here. Oh, well, do you want to go? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we want to go that. Yeah. 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 Uh, signatures on the notice and the options. Uh, right. Yeah. It's we'll page design. through. Okay. Yeah. Today is right. Three. And we need to put Seven. copies off the table, too, so it's complicated. And it's, oh, don't have any other copies. Well, then we'll have, we'll make a photocopy for everybody. And this Unless you want release. three copies. Is that black or blue? Hmm? Yeah, I have. You don't oh. like my blue? I guess. Yeah. 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 Yes. Oh, we have to sign some more? Yeah. So on this should day. Should it be today? Yeah, because that's right. Yeah, it should be today's date, the date that we're signing. July 23, 24th. Oh, yes, I'm still. This month's gone. Right now. Oh, I did it backwards, Karen. Some of it's gone. 24th. You shouldn't be open to this. July 20th. Oh, okay. I'm going to have to fill out the book. Okay. Well, that's when she witnesses her signature. You have to witness that. 
Karen. So you'll have to go up to Karen. Okay. Did I already sign someplace she was supposed to sign? No, then we're going to pass it back this way, Rudy. So everybody can sign? Okay. Do you want me in the same order? No. Yeah, purchase. This one's nice. This is a nice one. I don't like I like this one. That's a nice one. Sorry, this is a nice one. Yeah, we have a box of these at the library. You do? Yeah. I shall get one when I come back. That'll be your pet. They were donated. Oh. Don't think I'll be having a white town. They're like gel pens or something. They're nice. All right, so I'm going to go that way with the book. So I'm just going to have to notarize something separately for the, yep. the fourth seat. Oh, there's another one coming mm -hmm. Yep. So if she's representing the Board of Selection, oh, yeah. I can represent the Board of Trustees. Probably care and seeing that everybody's here, you could probably notarize it afterwards. Put the stamps on it we'll afterwards have because see you've yeah, got she's gonna have to show up. Okay. okay. We'll do it I have a book. Yeah, we'll do it after yeah, the meeting because you've seen everybody okay. sign. Yeah, I did. Oh, we didn't actually sign it. Oh, you didn't sign oh, you did. it? Yes, did. Each each person has their own individual notarization it. at the very end. Oh, I oh. at the end? Oh, we're gonna sign this. We're gonna sign cash. No, this is a notary. I see. Yeah, it's like an old last page. I think she can. I know. I think we kind of did. Oh, those are all yours. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you can get. Yeah, so you can sign them and then share. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they sign them. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 Did Sarah Moody really have to sign on that other one, or was it just yeah. being told filling in all the information? He gave us a couple of years. Yeah. Okay. 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 And how about, so they're all signed? Yes. Okay. And then the notarizations are just here. Yes. Yeah. So it's just Karen. Okay. Follow your line. And I know we have our way. Okay. Yeah. You're personally known, so she's all set. Oh, my. Okay. Okay. Right. okay. Like in the White House, <laughs> she's still with us. Yeah, I'm still at 67 percent, so we're still good for a while. Yeah, okay. I, Next I, thing on our agenda is, a, is to appoint our new town treasurer. Uh, we were appointing Monica Redman to be our new uh, town treasurer with her term to expire of June 30th, 2021. And uh, within um, two months, we will give her a review. Motion to approve. Beth? Beth, I think. Okay. Yep, Second thanks. Minute. And, and I'd like to say, Monica comes to us from the town of um, Charlton. She's, been, she's worked for Charlton for six years. She was the assistant treasurer in Charlton. And right now, she is the assistant to the town accountant. So she's come <coughs> with you know, six years of experience in municipal government. And so we wish her well. And so I'd like look to for, look forward to it. Yeah, so we look forward to having She's coming on board. She'll be here at the end of the month. No, just. So I'd like to. A motion. So you've done a motion. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so Beth has <coughs> Beth has to sign this one. Okay. We well, we have to wait till before we get the other ones. Is there any special order in the next carol? Yeah, we're gonna have um let's see. Yeah, next one. Okay. 
James first. Yes, Jerry, and then Kathy. And then, um, okay. <clears throat> Kate. All right. And we'll just wait. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yes, I have. I, I have some questions. Congratulations to work. Thank you. Now the work begins. We're going to need, yeah, I know it's already started. Um, we need the original for our meeting to finish oh, yeah. the signatures. Yeah, yeah Carol, I mean, um, Karen will notarize it after the meeting and then and I'll get it tomorrow. Yeah. You'll pick it okay. up tomorrow. Okay. We're all set. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Please, please, please. Okay. See you in the water, Barbara. No. Nope. Nope. Oh, you get If it's quick, I mean. If it's, is it quick? It's still quick, yeah. Okay, Gary, come on up. is that um, I have uh, clients that end up needing emergency repairs to their home. Mm -hmm. This is considered a benefit under Chapter 115, which is administered by 108 CMR, subsection 7. And that is, um, Emergency Home Repair 7-09. Now, what ends up happening is that we have to get four estimates mm -hmm. for the work to get done. We get the four estimates, they pick the low estimate there, and then the max amount that the state will authorize is basically $2,000. Anything over that $2,000, they can authorize, but we would have to establish a payment, repayment plan and hold the house and a lien, mm -hmm. okay? And sometimes, like what happened last year, and Carrie was very nice to, to assist me in getting this done, 
uh, but later on informed me that she was in violation of another law, chapter, Mass General Law, chapter 41, yeah. section 56, in which she can't write a check until the work is completed. Now, some of the contractors, like what happened last fall, was that we were working a, on a mobile home. The house has a uh, sheet metal roof that's curved and corrugated. Mm -hmm. You don't find that at the local hardware store or Lowe's or Howe's or anything like that. So it's difficult for the contractor to purchase that by going up, and usually they might have a, a credit line mm -hmm. with that department. And uh, so they would need money up front to be able to purchase the materials. According to Chapter 4156, they can't do that. Okay, and yet it is a benefit that's authorized, and I have to take those, those uh, estimates, and I have to submit them to the Department of Veterans Services, and they get pre-authorized, which means that the town gets reimbursed, not at 75%, like all the other benefits, but at 100%. So these are things that we're, we're finding a conflict. Now, I was able to resolve this issue this past week where a contractor had asked for a certain amount of funds up front uh, to purchase materials. When I explained to him about Chapter 41, he said, no problem. He said, I have a credit with this company here. I'll be able to purchase that. Um, in other situations, I, you know, and it, particularly in this one here, I, I offered my own personal funds to be able to put up front as long as I'm able to get reimbursed by the town at the completion. But that's not always going to be available. No. Okay? Either because I'm not going to be financially able to do that, or if I'm not in the position, somebody is going to be having the same problem down the line. And so this is something that we, Carrie and I, thought should go, come to the, uh, the front of the, uh, the Board of Selectmen here so that you folks, if you can make the decision, fine. If not, you might be able to check with town council to be able to get some sort of determination on this. Because this is something that could, I could see coming back as a lawsuit against the town for you know failure to use uh, to to give the benefit or in the term of a, of a contractor some contractor you know um, as for example the one I cited before from last year I got four estimates three of the four estimates were in the five-figure range because they wanted to redo the entire roof It's, it's something that I have not approached them with on that. Um, I think that some would, but then again, if they don't have the working capital to be able to purchase that material to start a job, now we're faced with a dilemma. So, okay. so, so for tonight, is there an action that we need to take? No, okay, except so. for just advice, you know, uh, it, it, an advisement to to see check with town council to see yeah. what they would say would be the matter in this matter see, because when, it's going to crop up again this is the second time within a see, year when carrie when carrie and i had talked about it yeah she, i kind of understood the way she said it that this was going to be the benefit that went to the veteran they can't they and i you know, you know and i spoke they, they you know if they gave a, a check for to the veteran yeah what the Department of Veteran Services has, has found, and this is why they don't do that, is that sometimes a veteran would say, oh, okay, gee, whoa, whoo, whoo, I get $2,000 or $1,000 and go out and spend it. But no, the way she had explained it to me originally was the check that the veterans get monthly. Yes. This was the money that was going to go towards this. 
No. Oh, okay, so this is a whole different. This program. is a, this is a this is okay. a different chapter uh, in section. It comes under a special emergency services there, mm -hmm. uh, emergency home repairs, and it reads in part: repairs under five hundred dollars. A veterans agent may grant up to five hundred dollars to applicants or recipients when the veterans agent has verified the cost of emergency repairs to the applicant's mm -hmm. owner-occupied dwelling or residence to protect the health, welfare, and safety of the applicant. Okay, so $500, I can authorize, comes, I put in for this from the, the town, the town pays it to the veteran, okay? okay? Repairs over $500, the eight veterans agent with prior DVS, Department of Veterans Service approval, shall grant the payments for emergency repairs to the applicant's home there, okay? and again for their safety and welfare this case that we're talking about now that brought this on the the applicants um, have a, a need for a rear cellar bulkhead to be okay. repaired it's leaking mm -hmm. one of the i mean the individual has one individual the actual veteran has uh, had been a self-employed, had a stroke, mm -hmm. is suffering some yeah. facts of uh, dementia. Okay, his spouse, is, they're both in their, yeah. in their 80s or, or late 70s, and they're suffering from some sort of dementia there also. She went out to put a tarp over it and put her th foot through the door, okay? And this leaks down into the basement. Mm -hmm. uh, prior to this last year, I purchased a, uh, for them a large dehumidifier to help keep the mold from showing up down there. With all this rain that we're seeing now, this so, is an, So it's place. only five hundred dollars. No. This is two thousand. That's two thousand. Yeah. And and what it was was that the, the contractor had requested and then said that he did have the the credit line to be able to go and purchase this and he would expect full payment at the completion which he can do per 41 but there are going to be contractors my point is is that you're going to find contractors out there that won't do a job for two thousand dollars and or won't have the working capital to be able to purchase that or the materials may not be able to be purchased so the question is does karen have the forms and the documents to be able to ask the question of I have to have the email, yeah. which, um, which has the Mass General Law and the original question. Okay. I right. All right. I can send that to you on the council. Yep. Sure. Yeah. That would be it. If you need anything, by all means, I can give you, it you to know, you. Once we get our answer from town council, then we'll make it. Um, yeah, and I think that would be good for the future. Yeah. Uh, it prevents problems from yeah. happening. It prevents all these problems. Okay. Yep. All right. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Our next one, I, I'm sorry if we're a little late on our interviews tonight. Our next one on the agenda, we are going to be interviewing a grant writer facilitator. And our first one on, on here is uh, Jay Mooney. Welcome. Welcome, Welcome, Jay. Well, thank you. Okay. Can you tell us a little something about yourself? Uh, I live in West Brookfield. Uh, I started writing grants in 2004 while working for the North Brookfield Public Schools. Mm -hmm. Was relatively successful and kept on getting bigger and better and branching out from education to EPA grants, USDA grants. Um, wrote some for the town. Um, got a fire truck grant for the assistance to firefighters program. Um, got another grant pending for the AFG program for um, emergency equipment. And for the last year and a half, I've been up at Mount Wachusett Community College as the Assistant Director of Grants and Compliance. Do you have a question you want to start with? Well, and probably, we probably should start out to say that <clears throat> we're, we're talking part-time. It's a part-time position. Part-time position yep. that, that it would work or dovetail with your other work was probably a key question. Um, I can't imagine there'd be any issues. And so, and so the, the next piece to that is that um, 
what we have is we've been very successful from a highway department perspective and, and to some degree in other areas, but not necessarily when it comes to this building and other areas and grants and whatnot. Okay. And so uh, the, the question I have, especially as it relates to this building, is any efforts with Mass Historical or any of those, uh, those kinds of agencies? I've looked into histor historical grants and arts grants. Uh, people in uh, the town of North Brookfield, the selectmen, They've asked me to look into, because um, they're kind of in the same boat with their town, uh, townhouse. Um, so I've looked into them. They're difficult, you know, they're, they're, they're hard to come by. Um, and there's a lot of strings attached, especially when you're trying to combine historical and the arts. Uh, you've, you've really got to have a, a good vision of, and a good plan from the town's perspective. Okay, this is what we are planning on doing and then let's find a funding source that meets that plan rather than, oh, there's some money, let's go grab it, and we'll create something that meets the funder's requirements. I, I don't think that's a smart way to do it. Um, I think it's better to find something that matches your plan. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see what Beth else. Beth, or are you? Yes, do you have any questions? Um, I see that a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, Jay's uh, experience seems to be oriented very much towards uh, educational programs, mm -hmm. and I was wondering how comfortable uh, he felt with uh, capital-based programs. Because a lot of what we're looking for is going to be like infrastructure-style grants and the like. Right. Um... I, I have written a, a fair amount of education grants. I've written the, for, for the EPA, a Healthy Communities Grant which, uh, for North Brookfield, um, Mass School Building Authority, the, the school roof project. So I've done municipal projects. Um, yeah, like I said, USDA, the Department of Agriculture. Um, up at the Mount, I've worked with a little bit different than the school system. We've worked with uh, Mass Skills Capital, which was a $450,000 um, just strictly capital grant, which I mean, those are the best types of grants. Here's the check, buy your equipment, and yeah. close out the grant. It, it's nice and clean cut. Um, as far as um, highway grants or, um, like I said, historical, I haven't. Um, but I'd like to think that any grant is, they're telling you what you have to do to get the money. Mm -hmm. Sure. They're saying, connect all these dots and if you connect them in the right order here's i mean it's, it's when i write a grant my office is chuck full of papers all over the wall and it's 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 a i think of it as a giant puzzle and i think i've been relatively successful with it okay um can you tell us about um a grant that you wrote that was solely funded and the, and the challenges that you face to uh, to overcome them. Um, every grant that I've written for the for North Brookfield for what twelve years, um, there's, there's a lot that goes into a grant. A lot of ninety nine percent of grants are going to hire a project director. Um, I've been the project director of every grant that I wrote for North Brookfield. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a certified procurement officer. So I know all the guidelines, so I can go out and I, I advertise in the Telegram and on Central Register, and I took care of every grant soup to nuts. Um, I've worked with the buildings for, for the challenge course. Have you seen the, the high ed, I mean the, the adventure ed high ropes challenge course in back of the high school? Um, I worked with the building inspector in town. We needed soil samples, so we hired the engineers. We got soil samples. I put that out to bid. Um, you know, there, there's always roadblocks that come up. We didn't know we needed soil samples. Okay, so you know that puts off the project an extra three or four months. And so, as far as challenges, I think whatever pops up, as long as you're straight and honest with your program officer. Um, you know, I can put something on paper and here's my timeline and this month is this, this month is this, this. things change. And as long as I can go back to um, the program officer in D.C. and say, okay, 
this is what's happening. Okay, that's fine. They, they just want to be kept in the loop. Um, it's when you're not transparent and when you're, oh, I thought I could spend this money on this, and then they find out that that's not cool. You, you lose a lot of credibility with that. Um, so I think any type of bump in the road, you deal with it and you let everybody know what's going on and you know you it, i've never had a problem yet and i've i've been the project manager for like i said everything i've written i, I take care of the reporting at the end i take care of the budgeting um everything that i've written because in north brookfield my grants have typically been the biggest ones for the town for the last three or four years the auditor looks at those um i keep all my records in my binders you know, five or six years, and we've never had an issue. Yeah, the other the other question is that we're, we're getting starting off fresh. I mean, this is something where each of us have done different things and yep. been successful here and there. Probably not as su successful as we like. Um, so it really comes down to the idea of putting a strategy together. Mm -hmm. So back to an experience that you might have had, back to pulling different town resources together to actually have a plan. At the mount we developed, we didn't have this in North Brookfield because literally it was, I would meet with the superintendent yeah, and, yeah. you know, which direction we're going to go in. Right. Um, I was responsible for doing all the research. But at the mount, with Mount Wachusa, I mean, you have many different departments and that it's that same issue. So we developed a rubric and our department will, you know, these are the five projects on the table. Let's grade the projects and, you know, you look at past funders and do we have a chance to get the money? How much money is it? Is it, is there any match that's required? I mean, there's a lot of things that go into deciding what you're going to go after. So one of the areas where we've been successful is to get uh, technical assistance money through CMRPC. Have you had a chance to work with CMRPC? I haven't. You haven't? No. So we, we, as we look to the open space, the next piece is the open space grants available in December, and it will really be led by CMRPC, but really wants to be managed by the town. So we need to figure that out. Yeah, we have to okay. figure that out. Now that's one that I missed. Okay. Beth, do you have anything else to add? Not currently, thank you. Okay. I think we've heard. Yeah. Anything else that we, now with those questions, yeah. anything? Anything questions else you'd like, us. questions for us? What are some of the items on, on the list that you're looking at? If you had a, a top three of, okay, why are you hiring a grant writer? I can give you my top three. <laughs> <laughs> Well, one of the reasons I believe we're hiring one because you know a lot of times we use you know CMRPC mm -hmm. and then they might take so much out of the grant. Yes. That's what it is, and yep. like you know the most that we can have from the grant here, yep. and that's one of the reasons. So we'll have our own in-house grant writer. Yeah, we would take advantage certainly yep. of their expertise yep. at times, but then there are times where, where we could get some direct technical assistance from them to run something. We'd love to have those monies and we don't mind them running it. At the same time, we have other grants, and, and in that particular case, a substantial grant, where 10% of that grant is going off to management, yeah. where I think we could be more effective if we were local. And so as, as we look to projects, this building, uh, one estimate was four million bucks to get it completely rehabbed and whatever. That may not be practical, but if there are a way over years to poke away at coming up with those kinds of resources, we may have an opportunity to do something with this building. Which I think that's one of our main things. Here. It is. It, it is, is absolutely. Town hall itself. How do you envision? Um, are you, is the Board of Selectmen doing the research and saying, okay, we'd like you to, or like the grant writer to look into this possibility, or is the grant writer doing the research and presenting ideas? Which I, I direction is it going in? Right now we're running, we're, we're driving the bus and probably from the back seat. And okay. we have a town hall improvement committee. Right. And they've been, you know, going through a lot of, you know, information for grants. Right. And, and so, yes, there's yes. been an effort on the town hall of a lot of citizen involvement, yeah. and that would be another area of integration that would be, need, need to take place is citizen involvement. Um, I'll jump away from this building for a minute that we just finished a dialogue session 
grant funded where we did a study on open space and recreation. Mm -hmm. yep. We'll be looking, like I say, to get a grant actually from Mass, the parks folks, to be able to see it. Uh, it's it's uh, man, Mass Municipal something. Right? Okay. But, it, but anyways, the folks that grant money for parks. Okay. And so we would be looking at that grant to one, establish the uh, our open space and okay. open space plan is, is uh, uh, expired. We need a new open space plan. That also fits into a master plan that needs to be updated. So we need to work on both of those areas. And again, there are grant funds out there to be able to do both I, of those. I have worked with the East Quabbin Land Trust yep. uh, on Wendemouth Meadow, mm -hmm. that project. Okay. Um, we get, I was responsible for getting some funding for that project. Yep. So, I'm so, really so we have that, and we also have a unique opportunity in that we have a bunch of uh, Adena-connected burials local in this town that we need to find a way to decide how to either uh, make a park or uh, take advantage of the known information that we have, archaeology that we now have to take that to another level as to what to do. Right. Is it a tourist? Is it a new Sturbridge village? What is it? Okay, and so the, we've got a unique opportunity there that we need to identify. Okay. So again, I, I think there's pockets of yes. different things and it really, this person needs, needs to then take that responsibility to one, develop the strategy, to develop the priorities yes. such that it's not a board of selectmen that meet once a, or once or twice a month. It's somebody that's actually caring about it on a more daily or at least weekly basis. Okay. That, that work it? That's it. Beth, any other thoughts? Uh, no, I, I think that one of my biggest uh, um, goals for this as well is, is that while, while the uh, board of selectmen need to provide the guidance of, of some of the direction that they be kind of open to develop these plans with, with multiple um, entities throughout the town because they're, they're also going to have to interface with capital improvement planning committee and, yeah. and yeah. figure out how you know some of the opportunities might fit or not mm -hmm. fit into the current plans for uh, different departments and different aspects of town development so just as, a, as kind of a statement rather than a question yeah well uh, i think the key is that we've been very successful in the, yeah. in the case of the highway department mm -hmm. knowing what we've been doing we need to find other ways to explore it in other areas of the town. I agree with Ms. Snyder. I like the proactive approach. Sometimes in small towns, you don't get that. Yeah. So I think it's a smart thing. But when, when do you plan on making a decision? Well, we'll think of it, you know, we'll have to probably, we have to get together with Beth and we'll Well, when she can get back in town for us. When she can get back in town, probably by our next meeting. No okay. worse than that. I yeah. don't know if we could do something before that. Even before that. All right. And we'll get back. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. It was nice to meet you. Thank you. Our next candidate is Kathy Lewald. Uh, sure. Um, I've been a grant writer for about 32 years. Mm -hmm. um, 15 plus years of strategic planning. Mm -hmm. um, I was the grant writer for the town of Brookfield for about two and a half years. I remember that. Mm -hmm. I'm when you were a town clerk. Um, and at that time, I think the biggest and most successful thing was the fight for the slate on this roof with the Mass yeah. Historical Commission yeah. right. and then it was installed where I'm going to hit people on the head but um, <laughs> that wasn't my fault so. um, but you know so that was that was a two-year battle um, mm -hmm. I did a lot of the community policing actually all of the community yeah. policing yeah. worked with the police to set goals write goals and um, and we were very successful doing that worked closely with the Cemetery Commission uh, with Peter Masuzo mm -hmm. to get some improvement some capital improvement funds for the cemetery, which was great. Um, I've done a lot of varied things, um, some in the healthcare program um, area, some in the cap, a lot in the capital area, um, including a $250,000 capital grant um, for a hospice home uh, in Worcester. And so over the years, I've had a lot of experience. I find it to be 
a very collaborative effort. Um, the grant writer can't set the goals for the town. The grant writer has to be the person to go out, interview the various parties, um, and understand what the, what the initial goals are for and what the funding priorities are for the town. And so if someone comes to you and says, I have this grant opportunity and it's to install cable TV on, on the common, if that's not our funding priority, then we really have to kind of rethink, even though there's funds avail available, yeah. it's not what we want. Yeah. Um, I've done a lot of compliance work in terms of allowable costs for federal and state grants mm -hmm. and um, making sure that funds are spent appropriately on the appropriate items mm -hmm. and in the appropriate time frame. I have seen um, when that didn't happen and I've seen money returned and that's something you never want to no, do. Want you to just don't want to do it. So um, in, in the role, it's not so much the writing of the grant, although that's important um, and, and following uh, all of the rules and all that, but in developing the budget and working with finance and working with the different departments, it's really truly getting the vision across so that everybody agrees on it and it's a consensus because when you put a plan into writing and you accept funds for it it better be what you really want to do and what you really want to spend the money for so i find that to be the biggest challenge now and you understand this is just a part-time position absolutely and so you'd be able to fit this in with your other job uh i'm not working i am oh, yeah. retired now Linda. Oh, you're retired now. and i am um i'm I shouldn't say I'm not working. I'm a subcontractor, so I do um, development subcontracting work. So this is, it's not only my skill set, it's close to home, <laughs> it's very close to home. Um, and it's also, you know, right in my plan. It's um, you know, just supplemental of re retirement income. So that works really well for me. Very flexible. Do you wanna, do you have a question to start? Yeah, strategy development. <laughs> Your thoughts on strategy development? Well, that's, you know, that's a matter of consensus and it takes a lot of hammering out with the parties that are involved. Um, so if you're talking about um, Capital Improvement Committee, you really need to kind of put together a plan before you go out and seek funding. You really need to have a roadmap of what it is that you want to accomplish and where you might be able to go about finding those funds. It's not about finding a funding source and then creating a plan to go along with it. That doesn't work. And um, everybody needs to be in consensus that that's what that is. And that's something that I've been able to do over the years in a lot of different areas. Um, when I was at UMass Medical School, I had um, a committee when I was working on the Walk to Cure Cancer and they were AFL-CIO members, um, political figures in the state of Massachusetts, mm -hmm. scientists and doctors and cancer patients. And it was a to get them all together in one room was pretty interesting, and that was my job. Um, and I find it, I find it challenging, and but I find it really interesting to do, um, to really get to the idea of what people want and where we're really supposed to be going. So it's critical. Well, you know, you've heard, uh, you heard when we interviewed the other gentleman. We said one of our concerns here is, you know, really to get some grants here to come into the town hall. Mm -hmm. You know, so what? Where would you start? I'd start with Mass Historical Com Commission. I have a lot of research still on, still on my old computer, but, but this is a historical site. Mm -hmm. um, the thing with the Mass Historical Commission, as we found, is if you are going to get a historical grant, it has to be restoring original condition. So there would also be probably, I mean, I know that we want to get this to be up to code yeah. for um, um, AD. 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 Yeah, thank you. Um, and that's not some place where you could go, but there are federal funds for that okay. and, um, and maybe private funds for that. So, um, but obviously this, and this has been going on. I mean, I left as town grant writer in 2003 when I went back to grad school. Mm -hmm. um, and we were talking about it then, you know. So it's, it's a pretty prominent theme and it's not getting, you know, the exactly. building isn't getting any younger. Exactly. So. Um, Beth, do you have a question? Uh, just uh, first off, I'm, I'm really uh, interested in how uh, hard you're hitting on the communication piece and how critical that is to, to working within an organization like this. In any of the recent grant uh, applications that have been successful for you in, in one of your 
current, in either your current or previous organization, what was probably the hardest lesson you learned about um, getting that consensus or aligning the, the grant with the goals of the organization? Well, people are people. Um, and really, really getting across organizational and organizational priorities, along with what's allowable and what's fundable, um, is it's difficult because somebody gets an idea in their head and it's very worthwhile and they want to add a position or they want to fund a current position, but um, sometimes that's not an allowable cost in the grant, and that was the biggest thing is the personnel issues were, you know, we want this and we want that, but it's not, you can't make that bend. You can't make, you can't make the rules bend. Um, allowable costs, especially for federal and state grants are very rigid. So getting that across is a little bit difficult, but also, you know, in a, in a group of people, um, everybody has an idea of what the priority should be. So, um, you know, it, that's where leadership the select board comes in and saying this is our plan and this is how we f you know you're the facilitators of that because you know everybody's and that was i think one of the problems with brookfield that when i was the grant writer but there wasn't really a plan is people kept calling me up and saying i found this opportunity i found this opportunity i found this opportunity but if it didn't fit with what the selectmen wanted and the selectmen didn't have a plan so we could stand as a unified body and say this is what the plan is right now for the first five years, and maybe in the future we'll go for that. That's really, really important that people in leadership stand together and work with. Them. So I don't know. Did I, that answer your question, Beth? Thank Beth, you. did that answer your question? Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. How long does it take you like to um, to write like a federal grant or different forever. Like forever? Forever. It takes as long as you've got, um, and it depends on the grant. It really depends on the grant. Very often, like one of the last things that I was involved in, in my last job was a HRSA grant that was for um, substance use. Mm -hmm. um, it was medical assisted treatment, medically assisted yeah. treatment. So it was not Suboxone. It was yeah, it was Suboxone. Um, and that had to be written in three weeks. And so um, it was a very strong collaboration between the Vice President of Behavioral Health and myself, going back and forth with drafts. Um, is this what you meant to say? Is that what you meant to say? Have somebody else read it. So it can be done quickly. Um, some of the larger ones, like the HRSA grants and the CMS grants, it takes a village. Um, they're really, and now they're all done online. It used to be, I remember the days back when I was at the VNA when they were like 86 pages and they wanted 20 copies and so you have to like take over a whole conference room and, and collate them. You don't have to do that anymore. But um, you have to be pretty meticulous and really consistent, especially when these things are like 200 pages. You have to make sure that what you said on page one is the same as you said on page 30 is the same. So, so they, can, they can be lengthy or they can be less and sometimes they come out on like the first and they're due on the 25th and so that's what you've got and they better be done and if they're late you're out of luck well just following that up we're into a nice era yeah. the economy's coming back mm -hmm. all of a sudden people have got money in their pocket especially some legislators so we're going to get, I think, into a situation where we're going to have a very short window mm -hmm. that somebody wants to take credit for it to get elected in the next term. Mm -hmm. And so there's going to be some of the quick hit stuff that we need to be ready to, to go after. Yeah. I did tell you I worked at UMass, right? So I've seen that happen very, very quickly. It's very well, again, political this organization. Is the, this is a period of time yeah. where the economy is changing. And yeah. again, people yeah. may not like it, but it's the reality of how, mm -hmm. how you go after it. Like right I, now. I will tell you that um, legislators can be very, very helpful. Jim McGovern, one person, yeah. um, really, really critically helpful and very, very involved. In, in the process in help in helping um, especially when you have them come in get involved and say okay this is what we we're doing this is where we want to accomplish and, and these are the benefits so that's another whole world but I'm good I'm good too okay I'm good. Beth? Beth? Uh, yeah I'm all set. <laughs>
her okay. okay super. Like we said, probably within the next week or so, okay. you know, we'll get together as a board. We'll I'm going away for a few days. I'll be back next Tuesday um, okay. evening. Um, and other than that, I'm going to be around for a while, except we're going to Cuba in September. So oh, nice. I'll be going for a week. So I hope. Now, is this a, uh, I see here, is that a cell phone we can reach you on? Yes, uh, I think my home phone and my cell phone are there. 508-523-5644, is that my, that's my yep. cell. All right. Uh, I'll yeah. give you my home too, 867-3645. Um, 867-3645. Okay, Kathy, okay. thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. Okay. I will get close. Our next candidate is Kate. Agility, is that how you say it? Yes, Kate Angeli, yes. Angeli, okay. Yes. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. Thank, Thank you, you for coming in. Uh, could you tell us a little about yourself? Yes, I, I would like to do that. I'd like to take just a few minutes. I actually have a, um, I've been writing grants now for 25 years. Mm -hmm. um, it all started back in 1992. I was a co-founder, director, fiscal manager, grant writer, grant. Uh, compliance officer and procurement officer of the Tri-Community AIDS Project and the co-founder was Father Peter Joyce in Southbridge. Mm -hmm. uh, we were the only service agency that um, attended to people's um, uh, physical needs in a 16-town radius, the Chana Five. Mm -hmm. um, from that I had a board of directors, I had the chief of police on it, I had a doctor on it, I had um, great community support out of these 16 mm -hmm. towns. From there, I joined the HIV Consortium of Central Mass and I worked with the municipality of Worcester. They were our um, agent. And then I um, uh, saw, because of our stats were so large, we started an wow. HIV Consortium of South Central Mass. So through all that, uh, multi-million dollar grants, all federal, mainly federal, uh, and that was a course of a span of over 12 years. In the interim, I was appointed by Governor Well to join the Boston City Council Title I Allocation, uh, Title I Planning Board, and I was also on the Allocation Committee, and I distributed millions of dollars throughout the state for client services. Um, in the course of those 12 years, I was on many review committees. So I have extensive knowledge on what um, people are looking for, and I know the language that needs. I know the, uh, knowing the language and the grant is very important, and I actually teach a course on it. And I have a 90% success rate, probably higher, but I think it's because of my history. I've written multiple, a multiple, a multitude of grants of all different natures. Um, I was hired at that time, uh, to the, in 1997, I was hired as the Brimfield School Nurse, and this is, and within a week they had put a grant on my desk, and I said to my principal, why did you hire me? She said, I hired you because of your grant writing history. And I will tell you, um, Brookfield has benefited greatly from my grant writing, mm -hmm. and I have about six grants I'm gonna share with you that the town of Brookfield uh, benefited. This was the, um, uh, a community partnership for children. Mm -hmm. Right now, uh, the cor uh, coordinator is actually housed in the um, Brookfield Elementary School. But back in 1997, it was put on my desk within a week, and with three weeks, I had three weeks to do it. It was a federal grant. I had to write the bylaws um, for it to become a 501.3C. That came after the fact, but I did get that first grant, and we started. And so that was my very first grant. And I found it the other day. I was going through, I'm retired, I just retired. And I have a, uh, you know, I've brought in over two million into the district. And just to give you a sense of how Brookfield has benefited, um, I did a $1.4 million character education grant. And Brookfield was part of that. I did a, um, a five town AED program and Brookfield was part of that. Um, I did a healthy choice and started salad bars in all the uh, five towns in the Tantasqua district. And um, grant writing has been my passion all my life. I, 
even when I was working, I have Angeli Consulting Services. I'm a subcontractor, and I have great success rate. I've worked with mayors in different towns. Um, I've done many capital grants because two of the grants were for um, housing, so they were housing grants and a lot of capitalization. Um, what else did I want to share with you? I happened to read your um, town report, and what I found is that one of your areas that you're looking for is a senior center. So I did a little digging, and I looked up some stats, and I found that per capita income, um, Brookfield is uh, below the state average. Mm -hmm. Brookfield is, has a higher percentage rate for Medicaid recipients, and has a higher percentage rate for 65 and older. These are stats that will really speak to getting a senior center. We can use those statistics for getting a senior center. It's a creative way um, of getting some, I'm also interested in getting smaller grants for you. I'd like to get some foundation grants and um, because of these stats I can see um, addressing uh, shut-ins in your community. I mean there's a lot we could do with that. As far as your building, um, you need to be creative, and one of, we could use these stats to get uh, probably federal grant, you know, because I think it's going to be really hard to get an historical grant here, but we can do it. But there's other ways uh, to do that, and I believe I can do that. Um, so, what else? Um, I also participated in the Brimfield Block Grant. I have that with me, and I started in 2015 um, a national program, enrichment program, for um, uh, a STEM program, and it's been very successful, and uh, that was a very large grant. Uh, I do strategic, uh, st strategic planning workshops. And I really, like one of the things that you addressed is how do you get people to work together? Mm -hmm. Well, I've done many strategic planning workshops and I have a technique that I feel works and has worked. And you get a group of people together. And what they do is I send out a survey and they send their answers only to me. Nobody will see those answers. And then I put it in a block, I set it up in a template. And then you meet as a group and you see what people want, nobody knows who. And then you come to a consensus where you um, do your vision, your mission, your goals, objectives, timeline, projected outcomes. I mean, all this usually comes from a strategic planning and everybody's on the same page. And it works really effective when you have an eclectic group of people. And nobody's feelings gets hurt, but they get to say what they want to say. So that was how I would address um, um, whoever asked that question on the, on the intercom. That's, uh, that's how I would address if um, dealing with strategic planning with this community. Um, I have a vast experience, and as you can see through my resume, uh, the other thing I wanted to share with you is that um, I am also um, very good at doing needs assessment. And I did a 16 town needs assessment, and that's something I could bring to the town of, uh, you know, Brookfield needs assessments. And I think it's just another way to generate funding. You need to have, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. I've done so many grants, and I love it. And I know I would do a good job here. Um, any questions? Well, it, it, the question I asked earlier, and, and it really is a challenge, because we've been very successful to receive uh, technical assistance monies from CMRPC. Okay. So again, have, have back to the work that you've been doing, have you had relationships with CMRPC as an example or a pioneer? No, I haven't. All right. I haven't, but I have gotten technical um, grants in the past. Okay. Um, if you notice on my resume, I, I outline different types of grants and different types of proposals, and I have samples of all of them if you need them. But um, you know, over the course of 25 years running an office, um, 
The other thing is, is I have bipartisan support. I did bring letters from, I have, uh, I have a wonderful support at the legislative level. And I have from governors to senators to, and I brought their letters of support for my work because I've done really, you know. So that's for you to keep, to read. So there's, yeah, both governors are in there and there's quite a bit. Yeah. A question I have here, um, what, what is your reward rate then for federal grants? Um, about 90%, mm -hmm. but then again, I've been on a lot of review committees. Yeah. One thing I did want to address is how long does it take for me to write a federal grant? Well, federal grants today typically have, um, they will give you, it's not like, a, it's not like you can write forever anymore. They will challenge you to do it in mm -hmm. so many pages. Yeah. And for me, they never give you a lot of time. So you go on Compass, you look at what they're offering, um, you sign up for the bidders conference, you go to the bidders conference, and I can tell you typically from the day of that bidders conference, um, most federal grants want it in between four to six weeks. It's never, I've never done, most of my grants have been about four weeks. Um, I've done a four million NIH grant, I've done, um, you know, many large grants, and I would say my two largest grants were the US DOE grant, uh, the challenge there it was seven communities, getting all the communities together, mm -hmm. uh, and the NIH grant was very extensive. Um, it was from a study that I did, mm -hmm. and it was a small study I did locally, and, and by the way, Brookfield was part of that study. Yeah. Uh -huh, yeah. You did hear about that? And um, it became statewide, and ah. it's, a state, it's the only one, it's the only second one of its kind in the nation. And it looked at academic, um, academic success and student health. Yeah. So from that, I generated many grants from that. I, I from um, listening to you, I can see that you have had a lot of experience in our UE sixty one. So you're very you're, you're very knowledgeable of that. I am in all the towns. Um, you know, I got the initial initial AEDs in all the towns. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, I, I've written very big grants, most of them million dollar grants, but that's because of my work with uh, TriCap, HCSCM, and HCCM. And we did a lot of capital grants back then. Uh, respite care, you name it. Um, I would like to do, I would really like to come in and do something for the elderly in this town. I feel I could really make a difference. Um, I believe I could um, get you a senior center without any doubt in my mind. I have the political support behind me and I would like to focus on that in this building and I would like to look into, I feel I also could, oh there was one other thing, um, on my statistics. Yeah, I really wanted to look into um, Tobin's beach site. I really believe I could get funding for um, from parks and recreation and individual um, private funding and foundation funding and even at the state and federal level to um, have a building there. I would love to see something there where we could. It, it's uh, unique. I guess the, the closest one is... It's Chicopee, but Chicopee's all dug up. Yeah, it would really be wonderful. It would be, and that's right up my alley. See, I love a challenge, and I usually succeed. Yeah, you mm. did. Like, you are, you, you, the more you tell us, you're so familiar with the area, so you really know the wants and needs of the community. I, I yeah, it's because I'm part of the community. Yes. I've, I've worked really hard for Brookfield. Mm -hmm. oh, you're not even, you know, I have. Um, I was nominated uh, by the Massachusetts Department of uh, public health commissioner for the leadership mm -hmm. and there was only four and I was the only one individual all the, the other three were agencies so that was quite but that was for my grant writing work and that was for my um, statewide study because it was the second of its kind in the nation but I do believe I could come in and do some really good productive initiatives for you 
and my gift is research. This only took me a, literally, this, the, these stats took me a minute. And I know where to get the information that's needed to get the grants. I know the language. And I know who's going to be looking at the grants. Thank you. Thank you. Beth, do you have anything else to add? Uh, no, I don't. She covered a lot of territory in, in there. Yes, yeah, I know. Oh, thank you, Beth. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to let you keep them. Oh, okay. That's right. for you. Great. Thank well, you. then we're going to yeah, share see. them with Beth. Yeah. Probably, probably within you know, a week or so, we'll get together. And okay. Decide. We'll get back to you. Thank you. Okay, Super. thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Barbara, did you want to add anything to this? Well, I worked, I worked with her when she started the school nurse and kept, kept in touch for the years. She stands upright. Okay, Barbara, thank you very much. Our next one is um, South Palm Trast, Trast Discussion. Ian's here, Don's here. Okay. George is here. Come on down. Yeah. Kenny's here. Inputs, but now I have to find them. Yeah. I think I'm going to get his How are we doing? Great. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I'm doing well. <laughs> what did I do with it? Ian, I haven't met you before. Oh, jeez. I've seen you around. <laughs> yes, I'm Linda Lincoln. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. And I know your wife very well. <laughs> and you guys did a great job. Yeah. What did I do with this? What are you looking for? I had some notes from Sean. And now I can't. They're here somewhere. I'm here for the Tom Beach as well. You like, would you like to come up too? Yeah. Okay, Absolutely. George, come on up. I'm sorry. Jenny's representing Boyle. Boyle, I'm sorry. Yes, well, I'm more than happy to start, but it's it's really uh, input for me and, and yeah. the feedback that he has as far as uh, where we are and, and the like. What we have, or what I did, is uh, Sean reached out to both wildlife and um, uh, the uh, environmental officers as far as. Uh, how to how to manage their affairs, and so I not that we're going to decide anything tonight no. with re really mm -hmm. with the relationship to policing, but there's certainly some conversations that need to take place okay. between ourselves, the uh, environmental police, and our police department that certainly won't happen tonight. But can need to need to follow through as far as how how much enforcement and how to enforce, and uh, that yeah. uh, it. It's certainly uh, what, what I'm thinking is that it's going to take you. It, we'll, we'll muddle through the summer, but between now and next summer, we, we probably have to have different bylaws structured such that there is, in fact, ability to enforce. So that was one of the inputs that I had from earlier today. Yeah. So, but Ian, your thoughts on, yeah. on the cleanup and, and how to keep moving um, together? Actually, before we go to that, I just want to say I agree 100% that there needs to be some bylaw changes. Um, but we can get back to that in a second. As far as cleanup goes, uh, we had the cleanup on July 14th. It was a Saturday. Um, we had about 20 to 25 people show up. We had members of the Lake Association come. Um, we had equipment. Uh, we were able to uh, rake and clean up uh, quite a bit. We got rid of a lot of the trash. Um, the beach looked fantastic. We had people come down with weed whackers, rakes. Um, we were able to cut all the brush back. 
Um, it, just, it, it was a fantastic turnout, and it really was a fantastic job that everybody did. It looked great. Um, and then I was down there about four days ago, and the beach still looks really good. Unfortunately, there was a lot of washout from uh, the heavy rains that we got. But tra as far as trash goes, there was no significant trash on the beach. Um, I know that a lot of people are keeping an eye out and going down there and uh, cleaning up on their own, which is great. Um, so yeah. I had taken a ride down, I think it was the day that you had done that after Ron. It looked very nice, so you know, compliment you for all your hard work that you did down there. Thank you. It makes it look like the beach it used to be when I was growing up. Yeah, well, we, we put a huge dent in it, and I know mm -hmm. we have a lot to go, and yeah. there's actually, uh, now that we've gotten down there and cleaned it up, it's also raised questions of some projects that we could possibly do down there. Um, in the future, having talks about maybe either grants or more funding. Um, I know it's tough because it's like, okay, what's the state's responsibility? What's our responsibility? But those are dialogues that rec department wants to open in the near future so that we can get things fixed down there, like the, the walkway and the ramp, um, which is terribly washed out right now. Um, and just getting things fixed up so that we can kind of take pride in South Pond again and, and make it something that we have to offer. And I think it should be like uh, years ago, it should just be a Brookfield Town Beach. You know, it shouldn't be any, just anybody that could come in. Because uh, we used to sell uh, a beach sticker years ago. And May I ask how long ago that was? Uh, when I was growing up, I've lived here okay. all my life. All right, so, so that may have been under a different license. So, yeah. so now here's the struggle. Yeah. The struggle yes. is yeah. that the wildlife has responsibility. Mm -hmm. We're leasing yeah. essentially from wildlife. Mm -hmm. The wildlife folks are not really into the beach business. Yeah. The DCR folks are into the yeah. beach business. The idea of buying it for a dollar yeah. fell through. That, that's oh, it did fall. It, it, yeah, we yeah, can't. It, it, yeah, we, the, something like that, as, as simple as mm -hmm. we thought it might be, to do something like that is not possible. So the, another follow-up discussion beyond the policing is, in fact, the structure of the lease. And yes, mm -hmm. the, the lease has run out by mm -hmm. 2017. Um, there needs to be something new put in place. It, before we go do that, we, we need to have some discussion, and I think leadership through REC mm -hmm. as far as how that wants to go. Um, yeah. Because, again, there's certain rules and regs that we're dealing with, or uh, agreements that we're dealing with, that we would have to work through. I've, I've raised a number of those questions over the yeah. years, and, and I think I, I <clears throat> applaud the, uh, the board for looking at them. I think that you're absolutely correct. We need to know what our responsibility is, what the expectations are, and, and whether we can go in, uh, in a town beach or a residence-only beach I asked the question previously as to whether, I believe the agreement says uh, that the license is for the town to run a public beach. It doesn't say mm -hmm. public for residents, it doesn't say no. that it's not exclusive mm -hmm. of residents. I, have they ever provided us anything in writing that says whether it can be a Residents only beach. Didn't Michelle a couple of years ago? Didn't that come up? And Michelle yeah. said we really can't say that. that yeah, we, yeah, a couple of years a ago that had come up, and we had talked to town council, and she said we can't specifically say it's a town beach. Yeah, that's correct. And, and and because it's because it's a state license. State license. Mm -hmm. Okay. But see, and it's also ago, the wording of the agreement. Well, see, years ago when Jepson on the property, that's how we made it just a residence. Right. Then, you know, then he turned it over to the fishing game. Right. Yep. Well, obviously, the, you know, as, uh, as the Lake Association, as a resident of the lake, I enjoy seeing people use the water and, and enjoying the, the, the area. Um, my concern is, number one, is that some people don't respect it. That's right. And, and I think that's the crux of the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's trash or whether it's compliance with rules. We had a safety incident on Saturday uh, where somebody uh, was using a jet ski and the police were called. The police came down mm -hmm. and, uh, and spoke with the operator. Uh, they gave them a verbal warning. Uh, 
this jet ski was within four feet of swimmers, young kids. Uh, evidently, I believe the police department has reached out to Spurbridge. Uh, they didn't respond. I also realize that the EPO offices aren't readily available. You know, so if we have an incident, what we prefer to do is to call local police. They've been very responsive. I, right. Uh, Any time we've called them, they've come down. Uh, we've had an incident with dogs a couple of times this year, uh, so I think we need a clarification of that bylaw. Um, as, as I've mentioned in the past, you know, the Lake Association has willingly uh, paid for and managed the trash. Uh, the people that transfer a station were great uh, in accepting our trash. Unfortunately, uh, it was, it was, I was doing it. <laughs> so I was going and picking up the trash. I provided the barrels and I picked it up on Tuesdays when the transfer station was open. And I picked it up on Saturdays, uh, which was okay. I mean, that's not a problem, except, except on a hot week when the beach gets overloaded and there is no there's no capacity for the beach, but when there's, I can tell you when there's 80 people plus on the beach, there's a lot of trash generated. Like three years ago, I emptied the trash a Saturday morning. I went back and emptied again Saturday afternoon. Unfortunately, the transfer station was closed, so I had a bag of trash in the back of my truck. I also picked it up on Sunday morning. I also picked it up Sunday afternoon and on Tuesday. Uh, I mean, that, that's one of those occasions, yeah. like happened this, this year as well on, on the 1st, I believe it was, 1st of July. Hot day, people wanted to enjoy the beach. Uh, the Lake Association moved away from, from me doing the, uh, providing the barrels and picking it up to a contract. Uh, so we contract with, uh, a trash hauler. We have two bins. One's a recycle. One's a trash. Be honest with you, they might as well be both be trash because nobody no. pays any attention. No. Uh, they do get overloaded. Uh, they're on a regular cycle. They come on Tuesdays. So, uh, it, it, so my my suggestion. I think we paid. So far this year, our Republic uh, bill payments is $729.57. QQLA. QQLA. Burden for that. Right. And we've been doing that for three years now. Mm -hmm. And prior to that, I did the trash for three or four years. Um, we also chipped in on the porta potty that was there. Because the, the beach and the boat ramp are so they're contiguous, they're, they're, it's hard to define where one begins and the other one ends. So the boat ramp and the beach get used much more than the summer hours. So with the support of Lake Association, we followed on with the porta potty installation that the state does. Uh, do you pay for that porta potty or do you, the one at North Point? I think it's, you pay for one and the state pays for the other or something. As far as I know, the, the porta potty at South Pond was supposed to be coming out of rec budget. Okay. So in the off season, we picked up that fee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, because trying to keep the environmentally sound policy to provide it so somebody's not using the the beach, uh, mm -hmm. you know, instead of having a, a, a porta potty there. Uh, unfortunately, two years ago, that agreement with the state kind of fell apart, and and we haven't done it for two years. So we need to circle back. So I would certainly encourage the town, or you know, somehow carrying that those porta potties year round. I mean, North Pond ramp also gets a tremendous amount of boat traffic. I mean, that gets, that gets a lot of uh, bass tournaments. Uh, I mean, Karen can tell you how many bass tournaments there are up there. Yeah. there. We, were, we're over a, we were counting cars. Oh. We were over a thousand cars. Absolutely. Yeah. 
There's um, always people there. Yeah. yeah there is so, uh, like I say, we've we've enjoyed you know trying to keep the place clean. We're, any support that that Rec can give us, and and we can work together. I say, uh, you guys were terrific. One of one of my problems when I picked up the trash was I had to transfer it from the barrels into a Brookfield bag. Uh, what a mess. So they finally said, just bring the barrel. So I just brought the barrel. I didn't have to transfer it. Uh, so, I, I mean, there's, there's a lot of help. Uh, we, we just need to solve the, solve the problems. George, do you have some input on it? Yeah, I'm speaking for the Board of Health yeah. in, in general, and um, we're fully in support of uh, the regulations that are in place right now be uh, uh, strengthened. strengthened. Yeah. Uh, we've had it's several consistent. complaints about dogs running on the beach or swimming in the water. and uh, They really should not be uh, there. Most public beaches don't allow dogs uh, in the summer. And the signs there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the sign says your dog must be leashed and it says pick up after your dog. Uh, mm -hmm. The incident that we had a couple of weeks ago was ugly. I mean, we had a town resident that was uh, down there with her grandchildren, and some of the women had a dog or two in the swimming area, and she asked the woman if she could move the dog. No, I no signs that they can't have a dog here. And the dogs were on a leash, and it got nasty. She ended up calling the police, and again, they responded. Uh, since that time, we did post that sign. But I think the sign should say, no dogs on the beach during the swim season. Uh, I mean, somebody comes down at 6 o'clock and unless the dog defecate on the beach, it's there when the kids come in the morning. I mean, it's just not right. No, it doesn't. I also had to speak to a woman from Sturbridge just a few days ago. She had her dogs leashed but not in her control. So they were running all over the place, leashes in tow. Um, so I think all around the, the rules aren't being followed. Yeah. Which gets back to what Sean said as yeah. far as right. strengthening the rules mm -hmm. such that they can do something. Guess, I have. guess they're talk, now talking about maybe it needs to be in the bylaws in order mm -hmm. to beach yep. rules approved in the bylaws. So, okay. um, and, and the enforcement mechanism. So maybe by the fall town meeting, maybe we can get some bylaws in place for that. So that, that would be kind of like the number one, and again, looking to Ian and the rec committee to, to pull people together to, yeah. to, to formulate, formulate that list of changes yeah. so that we can understand that for, and then for come a town be, meeting. Then come before us and then also probably before the bylaw committee mm -hmm. yep. so and, you get support um, from them also. And if, if I could touch on just a couple of these, I can tell you that REC is in full support of having the beach be no dogs. If, especially during swim season. We've already been discussing that, so that's something we'll bring before you guys. Um, as far, we've also noticed the traffic of boats, you know, jet skis coming very close to the swimming area. Um, we used all of our budget on the new equipment this year, but once the fiscal year starts and we get the new budget, um, when we get the new funds, we were talking about purchasing large buoys that we can put about 10, 15 feet out from the swim area that will have like a second border. So that's one of the things we were talking about doing to keep the boats away from the swim area. Um, and then the other thing, and this is just coming from me, not rec as a whole, we did a trash in, trash out policy at Lewis Field, and it's actually working fairly well. Yeah. That would be something that I would suggest maybe looking at for the beach is just not even providing the cans and just having all trash brought in needs to be removed. Um, because let's face it, the people who are going to throw their trash on the beach, mm -hmm. they're not going to use cans if they're there or not. So. The well, department suggested that too. Yeah, and, and again, the reason that they didn't have cans for a while was just that. that they, okay, I wasn't sure yeah, if they had had. And again, Feedback from highway, if they can help, they can help. Mm -hmm. And to a degree, and again, look to your leadership to, to direct that. 
But at the same time, the trash in, trash out thing was exactly what they tried to do, and it seemed to work for a, at least a while. Mm -hmm. Okay. When I when I put the trash barrels out there a number of years ago, I talked with Herb. I talked with the state, you know, and Herb says it's not going to work. It's not going to work. People are going to put couches down there. Well, uh, just I, I, and I said this before. Um, when somebody dumps one tire in uh, on the ground, they mate and that one tire becomes several, I mean, it ju they just grow. Um, and it's kind of like the trash barrels. If you don't keep them picked up, then it does kind of yeah. grow. So it, it has worked very well. Um, I don't think it works quite as well now with the, with the uh, Republic trash barrels there. Uh, but uh, as, as I said, they pick up on Tuesdays and I used to pick up twice a week. So that gets the funding in back to November. Mm -hmm. the so I think the other piece to this is to make sure that through rec to the other groups and whatnot that we set aside whether it's porta potties or trash bins or trash pickup or whatever that we set it really be forceful as far as what we're going to do or not going to do, but, mm -hmm. but basically have, for November to ask for what we need to maintain the thing yeah, a year so, from now, yeah, so that we can fund the budgets to take care of all. Yeah. Ian also mentioned about the um, the walkway down the handicap walk. A fit person can't walk down that walk. I mean, it's so eroded, and that was that was basically the state design. Um, and it it really doesn't work well. I mean, it, it's not going to work well. So I, and I hate to burden highway with trying to come up with a new design, I, but I do think that we need to look at. Uh, something there that does work. And but we also need to slide back around. Mm -hmm. Bill Davis is retired. Right. New, new guy in place. A conversation with him. I mean, Bill was very gracious to come out here and visit with us a couple of months ago. Right. And I think to invite the new guy and, and really once we kind of have our act together to really talk about the agreement and what we actually should be thinking about doing. Yeah. Now you do know that the state is looking at putting some handicap um, floats out at the boat ramp so that handicapped people can go out on a float and get onto a boat and so that, that so uh, Ken, Kenny you have you have that right you have that proposal so they're they're still and again there's no separate hard to just separate determine the separation between the the boat launch area and the beach but uh, but they are involved, so I mean, we really ought to. They were going to enlarge and repair the parking lot across the street from the beach, which they ran out of money for. Uh, I talked with Terry Smith, who is the uh, the kid that designed the boat ramp, uh, and he said, actually, I talked with Ann Gobi's office, and they're waiting for that bond bill to go through. Uh, and if that happens, then that parking lot repair is included in that. But maybe that's not all we need to ask for. We need to get our act together and then take it to that next level. Yeah. So, George, from health, and, uh, you now you guys are now taking the readings. Um, we're going to start Saturday. Saturday, okay. Yeah. Thanks. The the um, water samples. Oh, water I'm sorry. Yeah, Is that what you said? Yeah. That's what I said. Oh, yeah, the water sample. The sample. So, well, I used to do the water samples um, and take them to Belchertown. Yep. Um, then Mike uh, worked a deal with the lab, and they do the sampling and the pickup and the delivery. Uh, so, so, and I just was curious if we had any feedback as to what the readings were. You'll have to talk with Mike. I haven't. Okay. I don't. I don't get that information okay. on a regular basis. But it's it's done weekly. Yep. Um, starting, I think July first. I think starting on July first is when he starts his sampling. Okay. So they still go up to Belcher Town. Or I, I don't know what lab Mike uses. Okay. So I used to take him up to. Uh, um, uh, Quab and analytical. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't know where they go now. We'll have to check with Mike. Cool. Mary Lou had it. Just a question. Um, some of the problems at the beach would be mitigated if we had somebody in authority down there. 
Uh, doesn't the lease agreement require the town to have a lifeguard? No. No. Does not. If we don't have a lifeguard, we just have to have signage stating the fact that we don't. A no lifeguard on duty swim or swim it at your own risk yeah. sign needs to be placed, which it is. But yeah. it would help even weekends if there were someone basically patrolling the beach. Yeah. The agreement does say there'll be emergency floats and a lifeguard stand though, right? Town should follow all safety regulations for public beaches and provide all required safety personnel and equipment, including but not limited to lifeguard, life ring, lifeline, guard chair, first aid kit, and rescue board. A no lifeguard on duty sign, uh, duty swim at your own risk sign will be placed by the placed by the town for the duration of the swimming season and may be covered or removed only by the lifeguards while on duty. So, so it seems that they, they assumed there was a lifeguard. Yeah. And, and that we would look to the committee to yeah, decide if, if that's what we want to do mm -hmm. is to hire. Well, it goes along with the policing. Yep. Do we still have a, there used to be a lifeguard chair now. That's probably long gone. I, I believe it is. I mean, I had uh, talked to Jeff Landing about mm -hmm. that, and he had mentioned that there was a chair a while back. Yeah. I don't know exactly how long ago that was. Um, but if that is something that we're going to look at doing, then we definitely need to talk about budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, just again, going back to the equipment we bought this year, just the line, the new buoys, the anchors, we were 32 cents under budget. It took the whole budget for the year to purchase that equipment. Now, granted that equipment will last for several years. We bought good stuff, but. Um, it's just something we need to look at because there's so many things we'd love to do down there and it's it's kind of restrictive. I think maybe we should try to, I believe that we should have a lifeguard down there on duty. And maybe this is something you know we can talk about and get ready for the fall town meeting and add that into the budget if, if the rec is willing to you know, manage it. Oh, I believe rec would be willing yeah. to manage that. And I think the conversation with Sean with yeah. what he's learned today and he had a follow up with the EO that was going to happen not today but later okay so uh, again that's an original Ian. so maybe if karen could scan that and get it to ian well give it to all of us okay. well i need a coffee I oh. need a coffee, so why don't we give him the coffee yes oh here he can have yeah that's my coffee yeah. oh okay great thank you okay. um oh, we do have uh rec does have a, a meeting coming up in a couple mm -hmm. weeks so i'll bring this to the table and just okay. everything we talked about tonight keep going Great. Ian, if you want to shoot me an email or whatever, uh, uh, you want me to attend the rec meeting, I would. I was actually going to talk to you after the meeting. Just okay. say it would be great to have representatives at one of our meetings get on the same page. Okay. okay. Appreciate all you doing, guys. Yeah, we, we do we appreciate it. Thanks. So, anything more from anyone? Jeff, do you have any comments? No, you all covered everything. Okay. Oh, I guess I do have. Have you reached out to uh, Andre on any on the sand issue? Yes, um, I have tried okay, this next one. four or five times and have not heard anything back. Okay. So it seems like that may be a dead end at this point, unless uh, someone with more clout than me can try to get hold of them. Maybe send, uh, send Kenny. <laughs> Kenny, they need to talk to Andre. I talked to Andre and his son, and his son had a pile of sand to bring down there on Saturday. And he said, nobody's calling. Then father said, don't put any septic sand Ian, down there. Ian, put him to work. All right. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll give you a call. Because I did. I did try to touch base several times. I left messages, never heard back. Um, so. The first time I called him, and he was very gracious and offered, um, you know, a lot of things. And then... I was never able to reach him again, uh, and mm -hmm. um, I think Jeff tried and you tried. So I mean, I think that's. I believe Jeff tried as well. Yeah. I think that would be awesome if we could re nourish the beach. Yes. Yeah, uh, you know, now that we've, we've well, again, yeah. right, yeah. we're moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. I think that would be awesome. That's good. It, that's good. It's idea. um, and it's my understanding that that sand is already past testing. Yes. So it would right. be a no-brainer to get it. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it's good to see that the REC and the QPLA, you're all you're working together in the Board of Health to get all these problems solved. Thank you all, all of you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, George. I don't know what use that could be available. Okay. Okay. Our next thing on the agenda is the evening clerk discussion. Now, I remember right we talked about to see if we could maybe get somebody part time. Lois or Lois or somebody that would come in and help out a lot this evening. I don't have anything in the packet because I thought you might want to take a look yeah. at and discussing it because I know you discussed it last night. Well, I, did, I think back to coverage and whatnot, and, and if, if Lois were available yeah. and that sort of thing. I don't know if Lois is available. I mean, quite honestly, I don't, I don't know if she is. I can ask her, but I'm thinking probably not. So I'm wondering okay. if she should advertise yeah. that or something. You said, it, I think you said that it, was, it could be the same title in this before. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. She already had a job mm -hmm. she already had a position, yeah. and she maybe hire another one in this before. Is that what you asked about? I think that was her idea. Oh, Beth? Beth, was that your idea about yeah, having... That, that actually was my idea. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the reason why I wanted to add it to the agenda is that um, I noticed that I was going through the numbers from last year that, that really our, our current day course doesn't necessarily work um, all of the hours that we currently budget. We, we had previously had two municipal courts. Um, and, and I was thinking about some multiple requests that we had had from different uh, different committees to try to get some minute support. Um, I know there was some issues with the bylaw committee. I know that advisory wound up uh, seeking an outside clerk just because none of them were, were really comfortable with uh, asking a secretary. Uh, and we've been looking for some time for like planning board and I uh, believe even zoning board of appeals also uh, is short of clerk right now. So the thought was uh, a lot of times these smaller committees and boards can't find a clerk because somebody's looking for at least a, uh, a fairly decent hour schedule. So say um, in this instance obviously we have to limit it to under 19 hours a week but what we can do is have the person be uh, available up to that amount of time and we would probably have to do a little negotiating across the other boards and committees or prioritize the boards or committees that they would support but then if somebody was looking for consistent evening work you know in the vicinity of, of, of 10 to, to 18 hours mm -hmm. a, a week uh, we certainly actually uh, probably have uh, that amount of, of work time that we need and I think that's been part of the challenge is like the planning board couldn't really guarantee somebody you know a certain number of hours a week I think across all of the committees uh, we probably could get somebody into a uh, uh, an amount of hours or an amount of space that would make it worthwhile for them and then also worthwhile for the town because it would be easier for staff communications of, amongst the boards and committees if we were getting timely minutes uh, of what was going on and it would benefit the town's people as well. So so those were kind of my thoughts on it um, and, and uh, hoping to, to help with the scenario where we frequently have had individual committees or boards trying to look for somebody with respect to success. I did a little research, Beth, with some other communities, and other communities do use the same person for, you know, their same uh, clerk, like for the ZBA and the planning board and, say, the conservation, any of the little, you know, that require you know, a small amount of work uh, monthly from them. And they do have uh, one person that will take that position. So we need to do an in inventory yeah. of the boards. Yeah. Yeah, we do. Yeah. And then, given the inventory of the boards, we could then come back around to then, with that inventory, go out to bid yeah. to see if there were somebody that wanted to meet. Yeah, I think that would be a good, good idea. So, well, thanks for doing that research, Linda. I okay. haven't necessarily confirmed it with other communities. Yeah. I just know I've done a lot of hiring part-time work yeah. in the past, and it seemed like that might help. Yeah, a lot of yeah, a lot of the, a lot of the small communities do that, and I do. I think that would be a good idea. And if we've got the headroom, might as yeah. well just move forward. We, yeah, we we've got the room to do it, so we should probably just move forward with it, and maybe. You, do we want to advertise something? Well, I'm saying yeah, get the yeah, get I'm the inventory. I think we can advertise it more than that. Yeah, we we do the survey in, in parallel so that we can then prioritize the, mm -hmm. the person's work when they come on okay. board. Yep. Okay, that's.
that sounds good. It's a plan. Okay, that's a plan. Okay, so we'll move on. We'll move on from that, and we will. This will be um, our next one. Here is uh, vote to approve the Mass Works grant application by the Highway Department. I would like to have. Um, it says, please be advised that the Brookfield Board of Selectmen supports the Highway Department's application for a million dollars for the Mass Works strap grant to be used for road repairs on Molasses Hill and Gay Road. The board feels that the needs repair are very important for the safety of our residents as well as travelers. I would like to make a motion that the board um, sign the strap grant for a million dollars. Second. Beth? Yeah, I'll check it back. Okay, any discussion on this? No, it's a great opportunity. All in favor? Aye. 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 It has to be certified, so I'm going to send, give it to Mike in the morning to certify it. Yeah. yeah. And then the vote has to be certified, and we'll give it, I'll take an excerpt and give it to Cindy. Okay. Cindy's gotten a lot of feedback. I know she has. Cindy does. She works hard down there to get all these different grants. She should be commended for that. Mm -hmm. And then our next one here is to sign off on a driveway permit. I would reluctantly motion to sign that to approve it. I think the highway, they, they don't. They, they want it to be us, us and agreeing and though I'm not happy about yep. the situation. I'm not happy about it either. Uh, it, it's just return the fee and move on. Yeah. So motion, uh, motion to uh, approve the reimbursement. Yeah, motion to reimprove the embarrassment. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Second. And now, uh, should we? Should I sign it then? Yep. I, I'll sign it. A motion for the chair to sign the the sign off on this driveway permit. Yeah, well, it's basically to return the fee. To return yeah. the fee. Yep. Okay. Yeah, but I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 And it just calls for more discipline. Yeah. Oh, and the forms are going to be changed. Oh, they are? So that the individuals now taking out the permit will sign off that mm -hmm. what the dates and times yes. and responsibilities are for both yes, parties. Yes, I think that's a good idea. So, so we don't have this problem again. The form's going to change. All right. Or has changed. Okay, then uh, that's good. Okay, our next one on the agenda is to prove and sign off the CMRPC invoices that we normally do. Mm -hmm. Get motion to sign. A motion to sign. Second. All in favor? Aye. Sign some, but we wouldn't be signing them all. No, I know. We've so got a good relationship, we can't. I know. Pull over that yeah, we do have a good relationship. Need to sign that? The second one? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Do you have anything you'd like to bring up on the other coverage this evening? I don't. Okay, and what do we have here for correspondence? Oh, all right. I just need you to um, ah, get to the pharmacy. Yes, okay. Um, last week, uh, two weeks ago, I remember the uh, Peter Martell had um, written us something that we would allow him to be able to have multiple positions. Right. And we right. just have to sign off. And he, he well, gave what it is, is it? Nothing to do with that, yeah. but with his paperwork, he yeah. has a conflict of interest disclosure yeah. in there too, but it was yeah. never addressed to yeah. Mr. Boston. Just yeah, the disclosure of that. So I'd like to uh, make a motion that we accept um, 
you know, the disclosure, yeah. the disclosure of a conflict of interest by the chief. You have that motion? No. Yeah. Great. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, then we'll go into uh, writing. Well, let's do public access. Yeah, we'll have then. public access. Do we have any public access this evening? Beth, I'm going to keep you on, but we have about 12% of my battery. 12%, huh? Yeah. Okay, you guys discussed 20 minutes about, we discussed the trash pickup on South Pond emptying the trash buckets. Yeah. North Pond, South Pond, the town common. You talked to, you got up here for 20 minutes, nothing got decided. So are you gonna have the highway pick them up on a regular basis every other day? We're gonna defer that to the rec committee for the same <coughs> reason that we got, the QQLA has a contract with Republic Trash, they're not happy with it. They're gonna meet with rec, they're gonna decide what they're gonna do. And the highway department has said that they would be supportive of Rex's needs. So why don't we just cut the chase? I mean, that the, the um, South Pond a AQLA, whatever this association is, why should they have to pay 700 bucks when the old days that was part of the highway jobs duty? How many people we got working for the highway? Five, six now? Three seasonal workers? It's out of control. Why can't you just say? That's it, you guys are gonna make sure the trash can stay empty. When people on South Pond Beach, they're not just gonna say, oh, they're full, throw it on the side anyway. That's what people do. Well, Keep the cans empty, people will put the trash well, in it. Well, I think the, I think the rec, uh, rec Commission is starting now to take over more where the beach is concerned, because they, they used to always, they were the ones who were always in charge of the beach. So right now, we're leaving it up to the Rec Commission and um, Linda, you know as well as I know, the rec committee cannot handle that type of work. They, so they, they, they can't even that. put the buoys out At anymore. Madam Chairman, we had a conversation. Yeah. A decision yeah. has been made. Yeah. Mr. Holcraft is okay. not satisfied with that discussion. So We're moving on. We're not. No, that's not. That's I'm not just no. Okay. I'm we'll, just. I'm we'll, discussing. We'll, we'll, motion to move into. I'm just. Dis session. I want to know. No, last we're moving meeting. into executive no, session. No, I'm. No, I'm speaking no. right now. I don't care. Oh, I do care. Well, go. Yeah, good. Do you don't right like there. it? No, I'm not going to leave right now. I'm speaking. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're we're going to end the meeting. Yeah, we're going to end the meeting. Good. Well, I got a couple more things I no. want to discuss. No, we we have we're to. This is public we're access, done. and you're not, if you're going to treat me like that, I'll treat you like that too. We we have to go into executive we session. We gave you an yeah, answer. That's good. You didn't accept the answer. We're okay. On. Well, so now I got my next question here is. Huh? Okay. The next the next question here is 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 this lease? I mean, has anybody gone over this lease with a fine tooth comb? Yes, I mean, the town, we, the, the town, we can't even have access to the town hall, and you're buying a home and that you were re renting it out, you think people can go up on the second floor legally? No. Do we have handicap access to this building? No. The voters of the town so, have made a decision. Yes. You're not happy with it. No, no, no. It's not, no, I'm discussing. It doesn't matter if I'm happy. I'm not even saying I am or not. I'm just talking business-wise for the taxpayers' clients, okay? And what I'm saying is we're leasing a building and it's not even handicapped accessible. We're paying all this money out. Plus, we're going to pay two hundred thirty thousand, thirty-nine thousand. Some smells here with this deal. We're not even this first year. We are leasing it. No, we're going to see what you know if it is worthwhile for to, to buy this building. Doesn't I just? It doesn't, it doesn't sound good, Linda. It doesn't sound good. I mean, it's not even handicapped accessible yet. End of discussion. End of on the discussion. You know, so yeah, it's not yeah, end of discussion yeah. because we're going to be we're stuck with this building for a lease. Absolutely. So that's not end of discussion. Yeah, for a year. We're, for tonight, we're done. Yeah, we're it's not handicapped day. accessible. Well, maybe you should go to a library trustee meeting and talk to them and tell them that it's not handicap accessible. I'm sure. And I'm sure they are all aware of that well, from the should, town meeting, Linda. But the thing is, Dave, if you have concerns, you should probably go to one of the trustees meeting. They just said. That well, they I'm, had I came. I came here to speak tonight because you people signed the lease. You are supposed to be our leadership. You are supposed to be looking out for the townspeople. We're going to lease a building right off the bat and needs all sorts of work. And, and we don't even have, it's not even handicapped accessible. The voters of the town of Brookfield made a decision. They made the decision. decision. To lease it, that's right. But, but you also we got to be concerned as a town that it has to be handicapped accessible right off the bat well, for people. Meeting. They're meeting. They're meeting Thursday at 1 p.m. in the and afternoon. And that's just one issue. That's just one issue with but it. But if you have questions, Dave, I advise you to go see Okay, them. I will do that. Okay, what's next? Because we have to go into executive board session. All right, well, I want to know what you're going to decide on, on, on the trash pickup on the pond. We already told you. You, you heard you, the discussion. You, no, it's, it's back. We're going to see this person. We're going to talk to the rec committee. Rec committee can't handle that function. 
That should yeah. be that should be the highway to patenting. They're they're willing to help out. Let that you know. They are. They are. And they will. They but will. I mean, help out but them. why you, you shouldn't pass it on to the rec committee? They, 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 those guys are burdened enough as it is down there. Well, Ian's providing leadership to this yeah. town, and we should accept lead, leadership Who is? from Ian. Yeah. He's providing leadership to the rec committee for this. Activity. Okay, but I'm just saying and we we, to, we need to improve the ability for volunteers to come forward yeah. and actually do work. And he's doing the work. He should. But do I the think work. the highway department they have the That's they have the trucks. That's your opinion. They have the trucks. They get the manpower. And we have, we have, they, that's, it's a job that should be, and you know, QQLA it's not something, paying a, a, a bill paying we shouldn't, they shouldn't be paying it, they shouldn't be paying it. Well, good, we'll see a town meeting in the they fall. Should, no, I don't think they should the be paying it. To, to we have, we, we're paying, services. we have our transfer station, we have the highway department. Yep. She put it through it that way. Okay. I'd say right. we move into okay. executive okay. session. All right, you guys can go do your executive session. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you for no leadership as usual. Okay, I would like to. The door's right over there. I would like to make the motion to move into executive session two to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiation with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining, bargaining sessions or contract negotiation with union personnel. Motion to move into executive session. Okay. Lincoln, I. Snyder, I. Beth? Oh, Beth, are you sign? there? Nope. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. Call you have to call it. And then I would like yep, to adjourn, and then I would like to reopen and go back into regular session to adjourn. Yeah, okay. exactly. Thank you, Thanks, guys. Thank you.